this podcast is going to go very wrong <laughs> if he continues poking the proverbial bear. Fully active, my father. Fling with the one there. Hey, my man. Okay. <laughs> Salamu alaikum. Welcome back to the Hold It Down podcast. This is episode 17. Seven, yeah. 17. Mad. Got to the point where I don't even know the numbers. I fully do. It's episode 17. We have less than 100 viewers and 100, 100 subscribers. This guy is expecting us to be at 1,000 subscribers already. Can you relax? You mention this every episode. The people are going to leave well, because we're just, so negative. They just need to step it up again. Because <laughs> We haven't been exposed to anyone yet. There's 8 million people in the world. Yeah, we'll get there. And there are 9 million bicycles in Beijing. That's a fact. I think that's an outdated fact. Probably. It was a great song, though. Welcome back to the Hold It Down podcast, episode 17. Fling with the one there has been out for a while. Um, uh, the the father one is out now. Go watch that. Uh, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah, what are you saying? Hello. Such a you're, bad start. You're all over the fucking place today, mate. Listen, I've had... Got, yeah. No, he's had a very, very <laughs> fucking long day. I have had a stressful day, mm -hmm. bro. Um, Work has been fucking stressful today yeah man. but we are here again in the podcast studio yeah. episode 17 yeah. and we're about to bring it right back m's on my left big Mikel right here and i'm gonna ask you the question i haven't asked you formally in a while yo oh, what's that how's your week been my brother well, since the four days since we last recorded. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So our answer of not riveting is even less riveting now. Um, no, nah, it's been all right uh, since the four days we last recorded. Uh, yeah, it's kind of been okay. Um, again, a lot of wedding prep. So did quite a bit of shopping on Sunday. Uh, went out and, uh, and yeah, tried to get a few bits for the, for the wedding sorted. Pardon me. I burp all the time on this episode. Uh, podcast thing that we do here. I need to take a breather. I think you do. I'm uh, okay. Should I make a reel of all the times he's like burped? Because it, <laughs> no, it, it must no. be over a hundred by now. Yeah, but it's boring. It is. Quite it boring. sounds quite boring. Yeah. Uh, no wedding. Wedding prep. So been like fully, fully busy with that. Uh, my time outside of work in this podcast is fully taken up with family and wedding prep and stuff. Kind of love it though. You know, it's it's obviously amazing what we're doing but yeah busy time so yeah spent a lot of sunday doing that uh introduced wifey to nando's for the first time i saw yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i would I, I saw the picture you sent me yeah yeah the, of 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 the the picture you sent me yes yeah i'm gonna put it up very well placed post food situation yeah yeah uh <laughs> it's my ocd boss i don't know what you want from me so what did she think of nando's uh, it really likes it to be fair. Yeah, yeah, it really, really likes it. She ordered the wings, but we had previously been to Wingman's, banging wings. So she was like, "These wings are like really nice, but they're not as good as Wingman's." I was like, "Yeah, you know, well, Nando's they do like a more generic thing." But I was like, "This is UK culture. You got to experience this." What sides did she get? Sides. Yeah. Do you know what? Initially said she said she don't want any, but. I was like, well, it comes with two sides. So, and then she was like, okay, pretty salted chips. She got straight away. Second one, she was like, oh, I don't care. Like, I don't want anything. I was just like, get garlic bread. I'll get two different ones and we'll like share the sides. But she enjoyed it. Okay, cool. She enjoyed, because she enjoyed the it. mash, top tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the mac and cheese. Yeah, mac and cheese I got, I always get as like a third side, an extra side. So... that That's the reason why that's there. <laughs> Do you, do you have to call me out on a public platform? Like Sorry. You, Fat you, shaming you, words, you, bro. You got on to me about my condition. <laughs> my, my my OCD condition. Your condition. Yeah, you're getting on to me about my belly. Well, you told me it's going to be gone soon. I've said that for years. Yeah, but we need to create a serious environment in which you are held accountable from now on. I'm doing you a favor, big man. I'm being a very good friend. Hey, tell them. Tell tell him. Them. Wow. So, <laughs> is that how big I am? There's more than just the one of me. It was a uh, Freudian. Or maybe it's my pronouns. Potentially. No, I'm not a dickhead. Um, she got the wings. She enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, no, no, she really liked it. She really liked it. I tried Saka's sauce. Yeah. What did you think of it? 
Uh, I would say it's on par with his football skills. Oh, so top tier? Mid. Don't do that. Mid. Don't do that. Mid. Don't do that. No, you are you delusional. Delusional is not even the word for that. You call me delusional. You call Arsenal fans delusional all the time. How dare you? Look at the anger. Fuck. Look at the anger. This is the anger of a man leading on to uh, the, uh, the, the second thing that happened to me in the past four days that has been absolutely fucking your, wonderful. Your un, is un um, happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the happiest I've felt this year. That includes my marriage. Um <laughs> is <laughs> Arsenal's 2-0 defeat to Aston Villa. Unai's at the fucking wheel, mate. How does He's at the feel? helm, bro. How does it feel to have a manager who who cannot say the phrase good evening come back and haunt you with a 2-0 defeat to, 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 to lead Arsenal to what they are just known as just horrific failures, the merchants of slipping up. Your title's gone down the drain, my friend. That £50 bet you and I had, out the window, you're never getting that. Do you know why? Because your club's fucking shit. I had an absolute ball on Sunday messaging you a barrage of abuse. Yep. A Nigel barrage of abuse. <laughs> it was so good, man. I loved it. He I got under it. my skin a little bit. <laughs> a lot! A little bit. It was brilliant. I loved it, man. I nope. loved it. Little yeah, that was a fantastic part. So those two things I'd say in the past four days have been my highlight. Wedding shopping, I had a really, really good day with wifey. Had a great day out. Um, and yeah, Arsenal's defeat is the best thing to have ever happened to me. That one singular defeat, best thing to ever happen to me. Uh, but enough about me. I'm sure we, my friends. <laughs> it, it took a turn for the worst yeah. when Arsenal lost. Yeah. And I got... <laughs> Feelings of inadequacy, maybe well, running through my veins a little bit. Calma, uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. We've spoken on this podcast about how, 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 and I and I spoke to you immediately when I started feeling this, and you made me feel worse. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that. No, it's not that deep. Okay, let's just get one thing clear. At the beginning of the season, I did not have any expectation. I did not think we would be second in the Premier League with six games to go, okay? So for you to turn around and call us failures, we are better than we were last season, we are building something brilliant, and you are so bitter. I'm just going to hold you there real quick, uh, Mikel. Um, because I have a couple of, couple of things that I want to wanna mention to you. Uh, a series of messages that you've sent to me in in the past couple of weeks. You and I were discussing a topic which we may not speak about today because I didn't have time to prep the official stats because I've been so busy at work. But we were talking about something in which you said football is results-based, quantifiable by stats. And yesterday, upon my Nigel Barrage of abuse to you about Arsenal's 2-0 defeat to Aston Villa, you said... We're still in the Champions League. We're still second in the league. Even if we don't win anything, we're still the best we've been in years. Most importantly, better than you. What did I say that is not factual? Well, I mean, just the second thing that you said doesn't really line up with the first thing that you said because what does any of what you said yesterday matter when football is results-based, quantifiable stat by stats, quoted by Mike himself? Well, we have more points than we did last season at this point. But what are you winning? Doesn't matter. We are on the trajectory. We talked about trend lines last week. Mm -hmm. This is the trend line we're on. Do you actually think that City are going to stay at the top forever? No. Okay? No. No, nobody does. Nobody does. But it's been a very long time since you guys have... 20 years. It's been a very long time since we've been in this stage in the Champions League. This position in the league come on bro give us our credit give us our flowers you're being a prick listen <laughs> <laughs> i'm yes. so angry i'm actually so angry yes. <laughs> i love how much you hate this this is brilliant 
Um, yeah, wonderful news. I'm so happy at your dismay. <clears throat> um, yeah, look, great. Good for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to move on yeah. because I'm sick and tired of this conversation. Okay. And uh, the rest of my week was <laughs> fine. I have been applying to many jobs. I've been working on a project. All right, calm down. You're so no, angry. I'm angry. I've been working on a project <laughs> for my portfolio. I'm coding. Yes. And I've got an interview on Wednesday that I'm very excited for and happy. Dickhead. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy for you. Thank you. And I hope you get it. Because, you know, as an Arsenal fan, you need some sort of win. This, can, this podcast is going to go very wrong <laughs> <laughs> if he continues poking the proverbial bear. Okay, so that is pretty much it. It's been four days and <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not actually being yeah. serious. Football is not that deep, okay? It's just a, a pastime of mine and... Uh, you don't believe me, do you? No, no, no I, I no, don't. No, I don't. No one believes me. I don't, and I think they have also seen the pure anger that you're feeling. They, they saw the anger that my ex girlfriend received when <laughs> I, <laughs> I confronted her about her vegetable oversteaming. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Still the angriest I've ever seen you. Really? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Not good. I mean, I was in the room. Yeah. Uh, you you think you being in the room would stop me from doing that? Yeah, you would think so. You know, you'd think that, you know, it's the kind of thing where you close the curtains a little bit, wait for your friend to leave and then have a go at your girlfriend for oversteaming the vegetables. Oh, you weren't there for what happened after. Okay. That's why she was... Okay. That's why she had a black eye the next day. No, 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 no. Do not do this. <laughs> no, what? Okay. You leave it underneath... You let them come to the conclusion in their head. You don't actually say it out loud. Okay? okay, fine. Yeah, no, she didn't have a black eye the next day. <sighs> if you could please uh, message me, uh, I would like to clear this up. Uh, the courts, we don't need to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. An absolute flustered start to episode 17 of the Hold It Down podcast. I've been getting onto Mike. Yeah. And uh, he is <laughs> flustered. Flustered. <clears throat> I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Genuinely nothing else of note to mention. Um, I As it's only been four days, I'm still sniffing on the mic, so apologies for that. Yes, I apologize for making you ill. I made my other friend ill too. Yeah. He's still struggling Oh, I received some good news about my friend going through the very hard time. He is mm -hmm. now two weeks clean. Okay. Nice. Really good. Nice, really nice, good. Nice. He messaged good me knowledge. saying he feels a lot stronger. And my heart's with you, bro. I've been praying for you. Uh, just stay there on the right path. You will... The, the strength just keeps coming. You know, you feel amazing. You feel like you can conquer the world. And... I've been conquering the world. You were going to say Pulsey, weren't you? <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, I saw, I saw the, I saw the shape of your mouth beginning to say the word Pulsey. You have been conquering Pulsey, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Genghis Khan in the team. <laughs> My guy. Um, I uh, agree with what Micah said. Uh, good on you, and keep it up. Yeah. Um, and it's also we spoke about this before we started the record. Where you have that, um, you've been there. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a relatability that you're able to provide people that maybe other people like myself can't, yes. right? Yes. So it, it hits differently when it comes from somebody like yourself. So I feel the thing that you just said about the strength keeps coming is very powerful. I've not been in that situation, but just hearing that is very powerful. And I really, knowing that you've been through it is, is to hear that is like a very powerful thing. Yeah. And I need people to know it who are going through it. Yeah. The light, as we were talking about, is there. Keep facing it. Take one small step every day and oh, it just engulfs you. The light is engulfing you. Like this light is engulfing me. The light of God. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, we are done with our weeks now well are we are we are we are we not i may have something okay i may have something so <clears throat> i was in conversation with an old friend of mine uh a few days ago a couple of days ago and this old friend of mine has been a bit distant 
I've tried reaching out to them a few times and I've not really been able to to have a conversation with them. I feel like this person has, has felt a type of way for a little bit. Um, and after possibly the fourth or fifth attempt of trying to reach out to them, I managed to get hold of them and, and have a conversation. Um, and I came on a, you know, on a, on a, on a calm thing, really. Uh, I started off in the typical sort of jokey, stupid way that I usually do. Uh, and I was just like, oh, look who decides to answer their phone. Uh, but you know, jokingly, right. Um, and the conversation started off okay, but then it was kind of down to, you know, what's, what's going on? Like, why, why, why are we where we are sort of thing? And, uh, and there were lies put upon my name. There were lies put upon my name. Let's pause there, lies on your name. How long have you felt this way with this person? Uh, how long has the communication been off? Yeah. Couple months, few months. Maybe. Okay, few okay. months. So lies upon your name. A little bit. So the the scenario is, uh, we were we were trying to link up. Now look, bro, we're adults. We're grown up. We got shit going on, and we got priorities. You know what my life has been like. What I've been going through. Good things, but I've been busy, bro. I fucking went to a different country. My wife has joined me. I've had a marriage. I've had a wedding. I'm having another one soon. Like to the same person. Um. I'm Muslim, so I need to clarify that because they may think, oh, I have four wives. Um, inshallah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I've been busy, bro. I've been busy. Um, and I was trying to organize a link up and this person came back with, okay, cool. Like I can do this time and that time. And uh, to be fair, I, I didn't get back to them. I didn't get back to them. Um, and I think I got back to them like quite a while later. Uh, and I think this person felt a bit of a, bit of a way about that because from the conversation that we had uh they had also felt like oh they're going through a lot and blah 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 and i wasn't really there from there for them i wasn't really a good friend and you know what i kind of admitted on that call and i said yeah do you know what you, you're not wrong i haven't been a good friend and i'm sorry about that but this person is incredibly stubborn incredibly stubborn so explaining yourself away is not a thing you know and do you know what this person is also quite selfish. And there are people that you encounter in your life where we've discussed this, that crossroads between sort of a childhood friendship and an adult friendship. And I was having a conversation with another friend of mine who we've spoken about before, who is oceans apart from me. And I had a nice long chat with that person. And every time we speak to each other, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry I've not been in touch. I'm so sorry I've not been in touch from both sides. The friendships that are my favorite are the ones where you can mutually not talk to each other for ages and when you start talking again you're brilliante muy caliente you're the exact same as you were before nothing's changed because the basis of that friendship and that love is real the foundation is the secure. foundation is secure the basis of the relationship is real and it's pure can't completely agree with you bro those are my favorite type of friendships like one person who who I can probably name check because I've name checked him a couple times. Cass, bro, like he's my oldest friend. He's not, but he's the oldest like friend. Friend, like, I'll call him a proper sort of friend. That's my brother. Outside of football, like we we barely talk, bro. Like we don't talk that often. But every time I see him, there's not a moment of silence. There's not a moment we're not joking about, laughing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are my favorite type of friendships, bro. But this person started talking <clears throat> and they were like, oh, you weren't there for me. You've not been a good friend and this, that and the other. And I felt it a very selfish view because firstly, you don't know what's been going on with me just as much as I ain't known what's going on with you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You ain't reached out to me as much as I ain't reached out to you. Mm -hmm. Cool, it took me a while to get back on the link up situation. But maybe realize I'm nearly 30 years old and have an entire life to live. At this point, you're also aware that I'm married and blah, 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 and things are going on. Do you know what I mean? But this person is incredibly selfish and inc incredibly stubborn. Don't want to hear it. But then they want to talk about you weren't there for me, blah, blah, blah. Motherfucker, 
you have rested your head on my shoulder every time you needed it. I fucking listened to you every time you needed me to. I was always there for you. And then you turn around and say that. Yeah. And there were lies upon my name. X, Y, Z have said that you've been talking about me to them and blah, blah, blah. Can I just say, I've heard the same, I know who you're talking about. I've heard the same kind of lies upon my name from this person. I've been accused of the same thing. And, 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 and I said to this person, I was like, well, look, either you are lying or they are lying to you. And do you know what the response is? Fumbling. <laughs> fumbling, fumbling, no no proper response. On an Arsenal FC thing. On an Arsenal FC thing, cuz. <laughs> On a, bruv, if I was DT, I would have banged my man in the face, bruv. Fumbling, bumbling, baboon, lying bastard. <laughs> Those are all the words I have. Right. You've mentioned before that you are an out of sight, out of mind individual. I am very much the same. I It sounds harsh, but... It, it sounds harsh, but it's just who we are. When we are away from each other, there are no expectations there. And that's what it goes to. It's about expectations. And I believe that's the thing. That's exactly what I thought at the time. Your expectation is nuts. Yeah. Because I don't have the same expectation of you. I've needed you in the past. You ain't been there. Mm -hmm. So why do you have the same expectation? Why? Because I've made you comfortable before when you have needed somebody to speak to. And this person had the cheek to say to me on the phone, you ain't ever been there when I needed you. Fuck you, bruv. I have always been there. I can't even imagine that. I can't even... it, It goes back to expectations, bro. And the thing is, don't take things personally when they don't match your expectations. When you have expectations of people, people are imperfect. Mm. So eventually, you're going to make yourself upset. You shouldn't have this world view. Oh, you didn't do this. Oh, you, you, uh, you missed one meeting that we had set up. Now you're public enemy number one. Like, what is this? Do you know what really... Alhamdulillah, bro, I'm, I'm old enough and ugly enough to, to not be upset by this situation. What does ugly enough have to do with it? It's just a phrase. I'm right. beautiful. Yeah, true. In every single way. Word to James Blunt. The thing is, right, is that his song? Words won't bring me down. That's not his song. You are beautiful. I'm old enough to not be affected by this. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for years I've said to even the closest people to me, there's not a single person that I won't hold the door open for if they want to leave my life. That includes you, my brother. I love you. And I never want you to walk out that door. But I have worked so hard to bring myself to a to a state of inner peace, which I have never had. And you don't want anything to disrupt that. Especially when I still, within myself struggle to maintain that at a hundred percent of course i so felt I, don't, it though. I don't need outside uh factors to ruin the peace within me yeah that kind of pressure especially pressure of that ilk you know but it was the childish the uh, childishness about it mm-hmm. it was the childish uh, ch- childishness about it that that bugged me because the conversation was because as I started off saying four or five times I actively tried to reach out to this person afterwards and I've been ignored 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 kept trying guess what do you want to know why because I'm trying to give this person an invite to my wedding and look at what her outlook on the situation has caused might have to bleep her but I don't even matter four or five times I've tried Mm-hmm. So I can extend an invite to my wedding to this person, bro. I know. I know. And what I was met with was, well, the energy you're going to give me by not replying to me is the same energy I'm going to give to you. That's why you've not been able to get hold of me. Brother, I'm nearly 30. You are 30. How are you going about your life like that? I ain't got time for that. But they've always been like that. Yeah, but you would expect, bro... I didn't I didn't speak to this person for three years once. Yeah, I know. And the first conversation, by the way, who extended the arm? Me. The first conversation was, 
I've grown up so much, I've matured, this and that has happened to me and blah, blah, blah. And they now have this 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 idea about themselves that they are a different person, they have matured and they're this, that and the other. You are the same petty, pathetic person that you were then. Selfish individual. There may have been growth in some, some aspects, but... Yeah, this... My work is getting older. Listen, you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned keeping the door open for anyone who wants to leave. But you also keep the door open for anyone who wants to come back. Because realistically, me and you wouldn't have reconnected if I didn't see you on the Elizabeth line one random day. Yeah. You know? And you left your door open for me. We weren't on good terms. Mm. And there were reasons for that. It was me. I am well aware. Now, this is the thing, awareness. I don't think this person can have the awareness. They are, they have zero self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Zero self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And the conversation I had with this individual the other day only cemented for me how complete lack of self-awareness they have. Mm -hmm. That sentence doesn't make sense, but... They have Get a it. complete lack of self-awareness. Yeah. Complete lack of self-awareness. And a very, very selfish outlook on things. And I'm not here for it. I don't care. Neither am I. There are certain times, yeah, where you keep trying. Like you said, I keep the door open. Because it's the same reason why I can have the friendships that I have with Kasim, that I have with James, that I have with other people where we don't talk for ages, but when we come back to it, we're cool. We are amazing because the foundation and the love is still there. And the, the relationship with this other individual is the same sort of relationship where we were talking about bleep again, the person who maintains multiple friendships with loads of people and is able to have conversations with people constantly, constantly, constantly. That ain't real. That ain't real. So if there is some sort of separation and distance, things then become awkward. It's like, oh, we ain't spoken in ages. But for us, it's like, rah, bro, we ain't spoken for it. What are you saying? Like, blah, blah. And then you just get back into it. You kick it once again. I think there's a very, well, I don't want to paint every female with this brush. Mm. But this kind of thing is a lot more prevalent amongst females. We, you just listed... A lot of your friends, Cass, me, James, who, who else, whatever. Men, we don't get butt hurt over dumb shit like that. Mm -hmm. But women are social creatures. Being ignored kind of, or missing something, they kind of take it a lot worse because it's a bigger like moment arm, a bigger effector to social dynamics in their eyes, right? Than it is to us because we're practical. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it anyway. It's kind of silly. And I just wish, I wish it didn't exist because that, I've, I've lost out on friendships with a lot of people for this same reason. I am not good at keeping up with you. <laughs> yeah. I can't even keep up with myself. Yeah. So please cut me a break. Yeah, the, um, the, I th there, there are natural predispositions. Is that the word? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for for men and women, where there are certain things which are just a, a bit more innate to them, a bit more programmed. And yes, women are a bit more emotional. But I probably am more on the female side of the emotional spectrum. Right, I'm quite an emotional person. But I don't think it should come down to those natural predispositions. Predispositions. That's the one. So I didn't get it right the first time. I used to be smart, you know. <laughs> Just because you can't remember how to say a word probably doesn't mean you're not smart. No, but I used to be smarter. What's changed? I don't know. I spend too much time with you. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm joking. Uh, you probably drag my intelligence up. <laughs> um, It's about growth. It's not about what's innate within you or that natural thing that you have within you where females tend to be a bit more emotional, males tend to be a bit more logical, whatever it may be. It's about then growing because yes, I am, as I said, more on the emotional side of that spectrum. 
more the female side where it comes to I'm, I'm i'm a bit overly emotional sometimes but i have grown enough to learn how to deal with my emotions that comes with age bro that comes with time this person hasn't got that it's about <clears throat> viewing yourself honestly seeing these trends seeing the way you react to things and finding your triggers and working on them that's growth that's what sets apart somebody with self-awareness and without self-awareness it's very simple and the person just doesn't have any to be honest with you bro they don't deserve to come to your wedding they don't deserve you reaching out the arm anymore because you did and look where it got you also at the age of 30 this person ended the conversation with get the fuck off my line and never call me again <laughs> by the way during a conversation where i was completely polite not talking over not shouting not rude in the slightest and in fact was the bigger enough person to apologize and admit the fact that i wasn't a good enough friend and blah 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 so she got herself worked up during the conversation. oh as she always does <laughs> as she always does bro you want to come back to trend lines how many times have her and i been in that same situation so many come on so many it, 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 <clears throat> at some point enough is enough yeah real talk at some point enough is but enough. it's not even on a on a oh i've had enough of you it's just like stay over there they're not it's just like cool yeah i just i don't give a shit i i can't believe I, that brother, she ended it like that i'm 30 years old <laughs> i am married yeah like do you think i give a shit while i'm so excited for my life ahead inshallah i have a long one bro i'm so excited for my mm -hmm. life ahead that I could not give a fuck about anything or anyone, bro. Like, my priorities are me, my wife, my friends, the people I love that are close to me. Whoever wants to be in that circle can be in it. Whoever don't, fling with the one there because men don't care. Mad. Do you know what's crazy? In her mind, she probably thought, oh, yeah, I got one over on him when I ended that call like that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're a dickhead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you know, what it, do you know who it reminded me of a little bit? Oh, yeah, just a yeah. bit sort of childish not self-aware not grown up like dealing with things like a bit of a child mm -hmm. and i was just like cool man <laughs> yeah. i don't need that because that person i just named didn't bring me peace yeah man. fought to to bring peace to myself by overcoming that situation and that person you were not happy which i tried to tell you about and then you were a prick which is why uh, I left his life. <laughs> anyway, a lot of that, particularly at the end, might have to get chopped and chipped. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, uh, it's fine. But yeah, fuck you. Bro, I said to her, tell me who and what they have said, and I will address it with them. Without you, I'll go and have a conversation with them, and I'll say, yo, I heard you were saying this about me. Is this true? Mm -hmm. Fumbling. Fumbling, bumbling, baboon bastard. <laughs> I had nothing to say, bro. I love fumbling, bumbling, baboon bastard. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> She's a dickhead, bro. Uh, well, she doesn't require any more of our time on this podcast. So Absolutely not. I really hope you do watch it. And I hope you realize maybe us calling you out like this will help you gain some self-awareness so you fix these inadequacies in your whole character because it's been a problem since the time I started getting to know you until now. Okay, she um she definitely won't watch the podcast, um and also I'll be completely honest with you, her continuing growth and success in her field, which I'm very proud of by the way, and I have always stated that and encouraged it, might be adding a little bit of ego, a little bit of ego, a little bit of delusions of grandeur about who this person may actually be like Seckle. don't worry you and i will be that one day <laughs> when the podcast blows we'll be pricks no 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 i'm gonna keep you in line and you're gonna keep me in line i won't be a prick because you know we we want the best for each other yeah, right i feel like i might have to keep you more in line <laughs> you will i won't be i am the one i am the one who has the tendency to go 100 even though you've created an ego reel about me i'm actually not that egotistical <laughs> oh i was just projecting <laughs> <laughs> brother have you heard drake's response to kendrick lamar 
No. <sighs> I've heard it's a, a madness. It is 10 10. Probably um, the best diss track in the last decade. I can say that. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Coming from me. It's crazy because of who Drake is. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because of who Kendrick is. We wanted to speak about this last week because I wanted to bring up um, uh, J. Cole. Dissing Kendrick. And then sort of retracting his diss a little bit. But just, you know, kind of to, to discuss that situation. But obviously he's flared up since then. Drake has, has added his two pence. Yep. And and I'm curious because my 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 knowledge began and end with what J. Cole did. And I did a little bit of back looking, back back searching back then. I can't talk <laughs> about what thing he did. Uh what's his face? Yeah. Uh Kendrick. Mm -hmm. What Kendrick said and then what Cole responded with and blah blah blah. But I feel like you have 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 delved deep in a depulsi. I have delved very deep in a depulsi. Okay. Something I can't achieve in real life, really. But anyway, well, um, it's fine. We are going microscopic and Microscopic, guys. <laughs> Need a telescopic device to to reach. I don't know um, why you said that so proudly. And I'm gonna replace the N word with ninjas. Okay. <laughs> I would think the natural would be brothers, but sure. <laughs> ninjas. It's, okay. It's my, it's my, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I respect it. Right. <clears throat> These ninjas talking out of their necks. Don't pull no coffin out of your mouth. I'm way too paranoid for threats. Lyrically, lyrically, Kendrick has always been this guy. He. Intricate. Intricate, bro. Intricate. Mm. Classy with it. Mm. People miss these these things whenever they listen to his music he's so he probably has the most triple entendres out of any artist i know mm. just as a base right that's not for me technically that's why i think he's better than drake and j cole mm -hmm. right problem is it just doesn't hit like it used to because the respect on that sort of lyrical ability doesn't exist like it used to people don't have the attention spans to actually go and search this out you know, or to actually f read the lyrics about what they're listening to and think about them. D-O-T, the money, power, respect. The last one is better. Say it's a lot of goofies with a check. For all your dogs getting buried, that's a K with all these nines. He go and see Pet Cemetery. Prince outlived Mike Jack. Kendrick Lamar's not pulling any punches here. Mm. He's not pulling any punches whatsoever. Now this, uh, before we go on to Drake's bit, this is why I didn't include J. Cole in this. Because number one, he retracted his statement. His, his this, he retracted it, he apologised, right? Why did he do that? Because this is personal. This is actually personal. He doesn't actually hate Kendrick. <clears throat> Of course, I respect him for retracting the- I mean, they're, they're, they're good friends, like. Yeah. Or well, they were, I don't know if yeah, they are, but... exactly. But this between Kendrick and Drake, and Drake versus everyone, it seems, mm -hmm. is actually personal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drake and, and uh, Kendrick is, is, I think, a bit more personal. Uh, and J. Cole uh, is, you know... You know how I feel about J. Cole. I love J. Cole. Um, I, I respect what he did as a man uh, to be aware enough to say that's my friend like why am i going to do that public platform this that and the other like you know he he said that he felt he was a bit sort of pushed into it by other people to say oh you got to respond you got to respond so you know he did um but for him to turn around as a man rather than a hip-hop artist and say i shouldn't have done that that's my friend i apologize you know as a man i respect it as a hip-hop purist that's where the conversation begins, doesn't but it? But hip-hop purity doesn't exist anymore, bro. No, it doesn't. It doesn't exist anymore, so can that really be in the question? And also, why does it have to stay the same? Why can it... We don't... We want hip-hop to evolve. We don't want it to stay the same, because if it doesn't evolve, it doesn't keep up with the times. Well, I have said this before. Um, my dissertation was actually on hip-hop and theater. Um but one of the things when I was doing my research for that, or just uh, generally I thought about over over the years when it comes to hip hop is, had everything gone right, should everything go right, 
hip hop is a time limited genre because the purpose of hip hop is to discuss the struggles of the minorities and their striving for betterment in their life. Should they achieve that, then the essence of hip hop doesn't exist anymore because they're successful. Yeah. So we should well, kind or, of... no, because they come out of that struggle state and they are seen as more equal and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But then it depends on what you consider hip hop purity to be. If you consider very early hip hop as just an expression when it comes to b boying and graffitiing, that's a whole different thing that can't die. Mm-hmm. But that that does not exist anymore. No, it doesn't. B boying and graffitiing and DJing like it used to, like Primo would do, that don't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. But then the evolution of then the lyrics, the MC, because the MC didn't exist initially in hip hop. When the MC came and then started talking about what was around them and the projects and the struggle and this and that, when we're talking lyrically and we're talking bars, because those things, the other elements don't exist in hip hop. There are four elements. Those other three don't exist anymore. The MC, if he then evolves and changes his lyrics from the struggle back then to what it is now, like, I don't know. It's just a bit, you know. Yeah, I think there has to be a a distinction between hip-hop artists and rappers i think this is why there has to be a distinction yeah yeah hip-hop yeah, sure. hip-hop is more than <clears throat> just spitting on a beat yeah i don't think hip-hop artists exist anymore i think everyone's just a rapper now i would disagree because the essence of hip-hop if you are underground you still have a chance to maintain it right yeah i guess so i think i, so. I think if if you look hard enough it's probably just not in in our view, you know. Yeah, but also I've fallen off mm-hmm. massively. I don't listen to hip hop like I used to, mm-hmm. which is a shit. I mean, I don't listen to music like I used to. You just don't have the time, do you? Yeah. This uh, this beef has actually gotten me back into the vibe of hip hop or you know rap a little bit mm-hmm. because it's just like whoa, okay, yeah. the giants are. <laughs> yeah, they are definitely the giants. The giants. Are Talk to me about it. Drake. Right, let's go on to Drake. What's he he done? So, I could never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. That's future gone. How can I be your number one fan when I made you your first number one? And the the feeling I get with, uh, apologies. The feeling I get with Drake is that he's trying to swat away all the flies, right? Mm. All of the people just chatting shit that literally can't hold a candle to him. And he's setting up the 1v1 with Kendrick. Literally, is just like, get the fuck out of here. We're warring, mm-hmm. right? This is what this diss track is, and this is why I love it. You better do that motherfucking show inside the bitty. Maroon 5 need a verse. You better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties. Top say drop, you better drop and give him 50. What's a prince to a king? He a son ninja. You know what I mean by ninja? I'll be with some bodyguards like Whitney. Whitney Houston starred in the 1992 film The Bodyguard. Whitney is Kendrick Lamar's girl's name, and there are rumours that she cheated on him with a bodyguard while he was out doing (laughs) push-ups. Wait, hold on. Come off the ting, fam. (laughs) Just come off the ting. No, 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 hold on. The out doing push-ups part (coughs) sent me. (laughs) Because how do we know? How do we know he was doing push-ups at the time? Songs but, called yeah. push-ups fam Yeah 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 I hear that Drop hear and that. give me 50 I hear that This shit's been brewing in a pot Now I'm heating up I don't care what Cole think That dot shit was weak as fuck Oh damn I mean like blatant Blatant Inner the face Inner the face Damn He also killed off Rick Ross He killed off The weekend. He killed off it's bars, 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 yeah, bars. But I focused on Kendrick only. Yeah, no, cool. But here, 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 here what I've got to say. Go on. You kind of have to do that. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to do that. If you're Drake as well. Yeah, but also if you look back at other hip-hop disses, um, Jay-Z on the takeover, obviously, went for Nas, but a couple other people as well. And his last lyric on that, um, was something along the lines of and for all the rest of you ninjas fuck you ninjas or something like that basically he left half a bar at the end after dissing Nas then telling everyone else to fuck themselves mm-hmm. like 
If you're gonna go, you you go. You go like if you're gonna go deep, you go deep. You know, what I you mean? cement your statement and you don't fumble your words. But that's why I'm not too. But this is the thing. This is why I'm not too stressed about what he said because I feel like it's the type of thing where him and J Cole would have had a chat on the phone and been like, "Yo, I'm gonna like say this, like whatever." Well, actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Because it could be that J. Cole jumped back on Kendrick's side after he was, you know, after he did first person shooter with Drake and whatnot. It, it, it could maybe be. maybe he's not happy at the fact that he apologized and blah, blah, blah. Because maybe there is just real black, bad blood between Kendrick and Drake. Yeah. The newest album, We Still Don't Trust You, uh, Future Metro Boomin. Yeah. Um, there's a J. Cole feature on that. So that, yeah, there's Metro Boomin and Drake beef as well. Oh yeah, I forgot to even mention that he hit up he he had one bar for Metro Boomin. Mm. It was probably the hardest bar in the whole thing. It was like Metro Boomin, Boomin shut the fuck up and make some drums, and that's because the beat that they used on like that was just like a slowed down version, and he didn't actually create any extra drums. That's like a little producer thing. But mm. yeah, Drake literally went at everyone. And I think that's the best this song in the last decade. And Kendrick Lamar feels like he's bitten off a bit more than he can chew now. Though I don't doubt him. I think, I think Kendrick Lamar will come back strong. <clears throat> so, in some ways, the phrase uh, or the statement, uh, biggest diss track in the last decade is a big one. Uh, but then in many other ways, you look at the state of the hip hop and diss tracks. Where are they? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. not that big a deal. Um, I feel like I need to listen to the tune mm -hmm. for me to properly be like, Ras, Bomba. Now with the, now with this context, if I'm going to listen to it and you're going to think, yeah, whoa. If I listen to the tune, I'm going to be like, yo, these ninjas are going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're going all shuriken and everything there, cuz. <laughs> <clears throat> Japanese katanas and all them thing there. So I feel like I need to listen to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting times. My thoughts on Kendrick Lamar. There's something about Kendrick Lamar that just, I, I, I don't know. He doesn't engage me. Something about him, man. I don't know. His artistry is is great, but it, it, it for, for me, it, it's not palatable. I don't know why. I feel like it's the difference between reading an article and reading a dissertation or a scientific paper. And I feel like Kendrick has, because Good Kid Mad City, he's still engaged. Phenomenal. He's still engaged. Phenomenal. Yeah. He's now evolved. And I think he's taken his art to, to a place where not many can resonate with. Yeah, but this is the, th yeah, uh, it's it's a weird one, right? When you do art in this format, in a, in a musical format, you need to stick to the Section 80s and the, the Good Kid Mad Cities where it's slightly palatable. Yes. You can't go on on the on a on a Basquiat thing. Yeah. <laughs> on a on a Banksy thing <laughs> and start doing mad like out there artistry which you know in a, in a musical sphere doesn't land as 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 well because music is driven by the people consuming the music and who consumes the music the general population if you can't make it palatable to the general population can you say that you're successful as an artist mm. and plus look i'm i'm down i'm out i'm you know i'm i'm here for different flows and this and that but sometimes you just go stupid with it Like sometimes, that, that's a bit of a statement. Sometimes, I've, no, sometimes I just no, nah, not not the flows. I'm just talking about now, like this is what I'm saying. Like I'm here for the flows. I'm here. For right, 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 right. But sometimes when he when he when he whacks on one of his voices, I just want to kick him. In the face. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid voices, like yeah. He does call himself the Gemini. You know how he has so many faces to himself. Yeah, shut up, bro. <laughs> fucking no fucking lizard, bro. And I think this is where J Cole comes in. Funnily enough, he's the boat. I feel like he is the one with the essence of hip hop who has the most palatability to his music. Mm. But he is technically, and I'm going to say this and you're going to hate me for it, technically out of the top three, the weakest. 
Technically? Technically, yes. If we're looking at as a technical rapper, he is the weakest. By far. And we're talking about flows, we're talking about lyricism, but vibe? <laughs> now we're talking J. Cole. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, vibe, I think, is the wrong word. Just feel. I am feel. I'm very feel. <laughs> <laughs> when I listen to Jermaine Lamar Cole, I'm feel, I'm very feel. Um, bro, like, the, the fucking, the warm-up and Friday Night Lights and born sinner and 2014 for bro like when you listen to him it's just in there bro mm -hmm. he does something different to me bro that's the thing about music subjective you can no but you can put across authenticity you know real emotion and that's what j cole really does well mm. and that's i can never take that away from him mm. which which means i don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying mm. i don't necessarily because kendrick yes is more technical than j cole 100 percent. oh yeah but it's old news kendrick has always been the most technical of the top three drake when he wants to be can spaz when he wants to he can spaz bro i'll be honest which is why a lot of people in this space i personally can think of Charlemagne in in the early days would say a lot like you do it so well why don't you just always do it but that's not his bag no it's not and he's multifaceted and he likes making different types of music and I respect it and Drake bro let's call a spade a spade you can't lace his boots man he's the biggest fucking artist to have ever lived like it's crazy soon to be no I think he's done it bro one more and Michael Jackson. No, there. since then, I think he's done it. Has he? I think he has, bro. I think he has. Also, there was one American uh, music, the uh, Billboard Awards or something, a number of years ago where he won 28 awards in one night. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, bro. But th that's And the him as well, bro, like, Thank Me Later was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Take Care was phenomenal. Like, this guy, bro. <sighs> views was sick. I thought Views was great. Views was sick, bro. Bro, listen. Man. Most of what he does is great. Yeah, yeah, The problem with all musicians is the, the more you continue to make music and the older you get, sometimes the shitter you get. But <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so that was very interesting. That, that was... I'm glad it happened. I'm glad that they're going at it. Because well, yeah, it does bring back some of the old the old feeling you need that yeah you need to cause a bit of chaos yeah moving on to news of the week news of the week it's the news of the week <laughs> an ontario resident who wants both a vagina and penis wins public funding for unique surgery public funding public funding okay can we publicly fund uh, his execution I don't think that's legal. I think it is if you travel to Syria. <laughs> <laughs> All of them things there can pr probably be planned and done if yeah. you talk to the right people. And I think you know the right people. Yeah, I do. But get on the blower. We'll do. Um, cool. <laughs> it's got to be the satellite phone though. because <laughs> Yeah, you can't be tracked. Yeah. A court has ruled the state of Ontario must pay for the procedure for the person who identifies as neither fully female nor fully male. The Ontario resident is seeking to have a vagina constructed while leaving their penis intact. Denying the procedure would infringe on the person's charter protected right to security of the person, the, co the court said in its ruling. The Ontario Health Insurance Plan denied her request for funding, arguing the procedure is not included in its list of sex reassignment procedures and is therefore not an insured service. The appeal board overturned OHIP's decision, ruling that vaginoplasty is among the genital surgeries listed for public coverage and need not inherently include the removal of the penis. The board therefore ruled the procedure eligible for public funding ontario canada mm -hmm. fuck you canada fuck that justin brother 
who's who's making this all possible. And to the person you have a penis and a vagina, go fuck yourself. Okay? You could probably do it with these now. Mm-hmm. Um it's 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 stories and situations and trajectories of our dunya like this. It's scary, man. That make me not want to have children. Yeah, bro. Because yeah, bro. because what the fuck is going on? What do you mean? You see, if I'm a resident of Ontario, Canada, that's where my tax dollars are going. Are you fucked in yet? Are you crazy? What for some dickhead to say? Oh, I want a pussy. We all want pussy, my friend. <laughs> True, fam. <laughs> He's fucking dying for it, bruv. <laughs> nah, man, that's a joke thing. That's a joke thing. It's um, ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like drop and give me fifty to this brother. Like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> diss track this little fucking immigrant prick. Yeah, I don't know why I called him an immigrant. It's just so. It's, wait, sorry. Is is it a she? Because you said she when you were reading it out. Is is that their pronouns? She. Because this is a man that wants a people. Well, it's a person who identifies as neither fully female nor fully male, but they lean more female. That's why they want the surgery in the first place, but they have a penis now, so they are a man now. Fuck off. Yes. Just fuck off, man. Can you go on to the next story? Because I, I just, I can't be asked. Fine. <clears throat> a funnier one. A female Yu-Gi-Oh player quits tournament because opponents smelled bad. Okay. Another player expressed concern after one of the women competing left her first ever Yu-Gi-Oh tournament because she got destroyed in her first game. The female player set the matter straight, saying, quote, I left halfway through because I couldn't stand the smell. In the comments of the Twitter post, she elaborated on the disgust, saying the smell was, quote, no laughing matter. <laughs> um, how... How old is this person? No clue. No clue? Mm -mm. So in the year 2024, where people are surgically um, adding the opposite gender's genita genitalia onto themselves, um, Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments still exist? Yes. They're actually very popular. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nick! There's a lot of geeks around. Nick! <laughs> and this hits home because I used to go to these tournaments and I can confirm... Nick! Can you relax? <laughs> the 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 twofold person has annoyed me. I I can see that. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. Um, being at these tournaments, I can confirm uh, there are a lot of people there that don't take their hygiene as a priority. Yeah, I would really imagine that most people who compete in Yu-Gi-Oh competitions stink, both personality-wise and physical body wise <laughs> i don't think that bad come on now nah, you're all right now all right yeah so hygiene has been such an issue at Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments that konami have made a rule that players showing up smelling bad or wearing dirty clothes could be penalized i have a message for konami if you focused more on bringing pro evolution soccer to the same standard as fifa You'd be in a better position rather than focusing on Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments like the Neeks that you are, you children. Personally, I think Yu-Gi-Oh is quite cool. Uh, I've been looking into getting back into it. If anybody can suggest a Yu-Gi-Oh deck for me, I will join a competition. I know a good deck for you. My fist to your face will <laughs> collapse. <laughs> when a fist fly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> when the fist fly, your face is the landing strip. Exactly, bro. <laughs> exactly. Drake ain't got a nine on Rhyme Asylum. Moving on. Woman addicted to eating her own hair has giant hairball with a tail removed from her stomach. The 38-year-old was suffering from nausea, vomiting, and an extremely swollen abdomen when she arrived at hospital. She had suffered dramatic weight loss, losing 15 pounds in eight months after she lost her appetite. She was found to be suffering from the rare Rapunzel syndrome, which has only been documented 88 times in medical literature history. The first furball was 15 centimeters long by 10 centimeters across, with the second lodged a little lower, measuring 4 centimeters by 3 centimeters. Surgeons removed both hairballs, and she was released after six days with recommendations to seek psychological therapy. I mean, yes. Um... <laughs> 
Bro, 10 centimeters wide. 15 centimeters long by 10 centimeters wide, yes. That's fucked. Here. Yeah. yeah. Also, 15 pounds is 6.8 kilos. That's not... That That's much. not that much, no. At all. Um, but <laughs> Did you just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> On a calculation thing. Bro, trying cal to see if you want to eat your hair. <laughs> nah, because man's not about pounds unless it comes to money. Bursement. Um, Hit that. I mean, my initial reaction is, good, you get what you deserved. If you're 38 years old and eat your own hair, <laughs> this is what you get. Uh, but also, it sounds quite horrible, and I hope this person's okay. Yeah, no, they survived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they are fine. Oh, I hope they also get the psychological support that they need. To I hope so, too. Eating their hair. If you ever... Well, just eating your own hair. What? What's? Why? Why? Why would you eat your own hair? Yeah. I How can know. you develop that addiction? Yeah. If How did it begin? Suffer from eating your own hair. Also known as Rapunzel syndrome. Stop. Cool. Now, last one. Moving on. Chechnya bans music that is too fast or too slow. The Russian Republic is said to have ruled that all music should correspond to a tempo of 80 to 116 beats per minute, meaning all Western rave music and techno music would be banned. You know, I've never heard anything more Chechnyan in my life. <laughs> in it? Yeah. If I, if, I, if I expected news out of Chechnya, I'd expect something like this. Yeah. Large up the Chechnyans, man. Large up. You're not going to fold. What's, what's the reason for this? Uh, so the culture minister was quoted saying, borrowing musical culture from other peoples is inadmissible. Okay. Okay. That's it. So it's the same story as, you know, Saudi Arabia. The Africans, not accepting yeah. certain people doing certain things in yeah. public. Okay. Cool. I mean, look. If yeah, again, bro. Again, if if that's what you man want to do, do what you want to do, bro. Do what you want to do. But the people of Chechnya are they happy about this? Because they're they're missing out on some rave music right now. Well, Tiesto's pissed. <laughs> He's never gonna be able to do a show in Chechnya again. Never again. But it's, you know, I'm sure. I'm sure it's not too bad for the Chechnyans. They got they got other things to think about, brother. We live here in the United Crapdom. <laughs> where where we we have, we we think about we distract ourselves with 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 Western techno music very boom boom b b b you know that's the, how it sounds right I think yes <laughs> that's the <laughs> thing yes I don't listen to this kind of crap <laughs> um, I do sometimes I like it um, kind of sick yeah it's good yeah uh, yeah we we think about these kind of things over in Chechnya there's bigger things to think about will this year's snowfall kill me. True. Will I be avalanched? I have no clue anything Chechenian related. Nor do I. I just assume it snows a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are a Russian republic, so uh, yeah, just, they are in war. That's um, the, yeah, well, that's you know, another thing. Anyway. They're not really in war. They're imposing war, but sure. <laughs> yeah, so that was it for news of the week. Uh, more angering than last week, that's for sure. Yeah. I think I started it with the wrong one. Yeah. Because you, your vibe after that, it's still angry. You're looking at me very angry. <laughs> I'm very scared. I'm sorry. If I'm not here next week, you know why. I'm sorry. There's mm -hmm. nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. uh, but that stuff genuinely upsets you. It just angers me, bro. Like, I don't know. Can't just like, where's the world heading? Yeah, the power dynamics as well. The, the fact that it got overturned by the by the fact that the the fucking the city of Ontario are, are funding it publicly, like, funding fuck it. Fuck off, man. This is why fuck people are off. leaving Canada. This is why people are leaving California. These places are rotting into the ground. Liberalism must die. You communist pieces of shit. And the anger spreads. <laughs> Right, news of the week was uh, very upsetting. Yeah. Shall we get on to wisdom of the week? I'm wisdom hoping of the week. it's going to be wisdomous and not angering. So, 
The first nugget of wisdom for you, Amal, is that Venus rotates on its axis slower than how quickly it orbits the sun. This means a day on Venus is longer than a year on Venus. That's mental. But do you know that Serena rotates Pondokoki? Mad. Venus was always better at the backhand. <laughs> But all in all, I think everyone knows that about Serena, though. Yeah, Serena yeah, yeah. got ran through back in the day. Yeah, guys. yeah, properly. She got that. She got that hip hop dick. E yeah, 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 yeah. She got the drop me fifty, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's a mad. That's a that's a mad fact. I know, I know. Can but can imagine? it then really be classified as a day? Like, but well, but, but but the age old question, Mike, what is time? Yes, especially on Venus. Yes. Uh, well, at least now we know what spending a day with you feels like. Um, longer than a year. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, you okay? Can we continue? All right. Not depressed. All right. Yeah. Um, moving on. According to botanical definitions, bananas are berries, but strawberries aren't. Oh, I, I knew this. All oh, right. Yeah, okay. yeah, I knew this. I knew yeah. this. Banana is a berry. Mm -hmm. Strawberry is not a berry. Yeah. yeah. Why the fuck have you put berry in the name? Who named it? Are you retarded? Die. I'm angry too now. Yeah, what the hell? Like, no. yeah, the anger has definitely spread. Um, yeah, bananas are wavy though. They are. I love banana, man. Bananas are brilliant, but also strawberries aren't too bad. Mix them together, you got a great milkshake. Oh, yeah, you really do. You really do. The, the thing is, strawberries are very 50-50. If you don't get a proper succulent sweet thing, you know the mushy ones. The, well, well so, I mean, you don't even pick up the mushy ones. I hate the mushy ones. Do you know what you need to do? Get a banging batch of strawberries. Yeah. Get a tiny little bowl, pour sugar in the bowl, dip the strawberry into the sugar. I've never done that. Listen, I have one word for you. Four syllables. Boyak Asha. Trust me, bruv. <laughs> Say no more, Ali G. All right, moving on. The shortest commercial flight in the world is between Westray and Papa Westray in the Orkney Islands of Scotland. Never heard of any of those places. How long do you reckon this commercial flight lasts? Three minutes. 53 seconds. Damn. Crazy, bro. Damn. Absolutely insane. I didn't Just know. boat it, cuz. <laughs> Just... Why do you have two... Why do you have two airports and why do you have a connecting flight between the airports? No, it, listen, it, it literally doesn't make sense. Ascension, dissension, like <laughs> it's not possible. It clearly isn't a normal plane, obviously. It's probably one of those tiny little ones that go off the water with propellers, just like this high off the water. But what does commercial flight, the definition mean? Because it's a commercial flight. Commercial flight. Yeah. Commercial, I assume, would mean that it's you can buy tickets for it yeah like it's for for anyone to to jump so they have like one so flight if, a day if we went to guinea and we were able to we could buy a ticket to go to papua new guinea wrong names but i I'm i heard with, papa and those are the i'm here with you things, i'm here with you yeah whatever they're called <laughs> the fucking kilt bastards yeah well, it's, yeah yeah 53 uh, seconds 53 though. seconds is a bit short just bro. seriously boat it you seriously can't, you can't even get to full speed you can run there. You probably could. You could probably run you there. Probably could. Because <laughs> that that's not building up any speed in fifty three seconds. None. Yeah. Absolutely none. Pathetic. It's hilarious. Um Or maybe it's fifty three seconds in the air. Maybe it fully takes off and then at altitude it's it's you know, whatever the, the, the altitude is that if the cruise is at. 53 seconds and then No, it's airport to airport. So as soon as So door off, to door fifty three seconds. Yeah. Ridiculous. Crazy. What's the point? Maybe there's no other way to get there. Maybe it's for people who don't want to boat it. Or maybe the sea is very catastrophic. It could be. Up there, it could be quite violent. Not up there. I mean, that's why they don't boat it. Because the sea is violent. Yeah, yeah up there. Where? Geographically, up there. Oh, up there. Yeah. That is, yeah. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Right. The Ringelman effect is a phenomenon where individual productivity decreases as the number of people in the group increases. So this is why you've got your giant corporations and you've got people that are just cogs in the machine doing fuck all, getting paid grands. Mm. 
idiot childs. That's very interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. You can even relate it to like, it sounds stupid, but like, uh, like group projects at university. Yeah. Like I, particularly with the course that I did, um, whenever we would try to create a piece of theater with a group of seven, eight people, it was a lot more difficult than trying to do it with a group of two or three. Yeah, because trying to... Not so much even coming to the idea or getting everyone to agree. It's just there's more distractions. Yeah. You had two people over here talking, chatting shit with each other, two people over there, blah, blah, blah. Like, even on, on that front. But then your thing of cog of the machine and the company sort of thing. Yeah, I, I get that. So if you're trying to do something or create something like we are, we're not adding anyone else to the team. I think two is the perfect number. Well, they do say three is the magic number. Three is the magic number. Um, we'll get your dad in. <laughs> sure, sure. Our episodes will last for 10 hours. Um, <laughs> is he a talker? He talks, he talks, he talks. Yeah. yeah. Um, my my guy, though. My, my dad, you know. <laughs> my dad, you know. All right, if your dad can't make it, my dad will come through. The episodes will last 30 minutes. <laughs> They'll last 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone, bro. It'll be quicker than the fly from Papua New Guinea <laughs> to Guinea. Um, <laughs> Oh, we do talk shit. <laughs> All right, moving on. Last one, bro. The tongue is the only muscle in the body that is attached only at one end. There? Yeah. At the bottom of your thing? Yeah. Every other muscle in the body is attached at two ends. So if you look at your forearm, mm. it attaches here and here. Your bicep, here and here. Your tricep, here and here. Your quad, here and here. Everything is... What about your cock? Your... It's not a muscle. I swear the cock is a muscle. No. It's essentially a blood bag. I swear I could have sworn it was a muscle. Or that, uh, yeah. I don't think about it much. I activate it, I use it, and I don't think about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> I activate it. It's crazy, cuz. <laughs> That's got a button, bro. Just like, ing. <laughs> I literally googled is the cock a muscle uh, the penis contains soft spongy tissue as well as muscles fibrous tissue veins arteries and the urethra these allow the penis to perform its functions uh, maybe even the muscles in the penis attach at both ends the bulbo spongiosus muscles compress <laughs> the bulb of the penis and the corpus spongiosum which can aid in emptying the spongy urethra. This is all wonderful. I really hope the doctor that performs the surgery on the person who wants the vagina and the penis knows the stuff. Can guys get so hard it hurts? <laughs> what are you doing? Painful <laughs> erections or bram bra <laughs> priapism are never normal. Different conditions can trigger painful erections, often related to how blood flows to and from the penis, including blood disorders. Prescription and non-prescription medications, e.g. blood pressure medications or recreational drugs. What is the greatest penis? We don't have any questions today, unfortunately. No, we don't. No, we don't. But I have a question for you. Oh. Well, this is coming as a surprise. Yeah. Go on. Would you rather always speak what comes into your mind out loud or never speak what comes to your mind out loud? Yes. My answer is, uh, I would always uh, speak what comes to my mind. You'd always okay. speak what comes to your mind out loud. Yeah. I don't think... I, I say things which are... I say worse things than, than I think. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you say I, worse things than I, I say more outrageous things. For effect. For effect. Just for the banter. Oh, interesting. Than what I actually think. I, I consider myself quite mild-mannered, so I don't really have thoughts which are, like, crazy. Insane. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, but I've had some crazy thoughts come to my mind at times, like, I'd fucking destroy your pussy. 
you know? <laughs> I'd have to say that out loud, you know? But do you know what? There are some gal out there that are fine with it. But that would mean... Especially that- in the day and age that we live in now, they might just be like, oh my, they come through, bruv. Let's film it for my OnlyFans. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but you could get caught in a sexual assault case or, you know. It's just a risk it'll take. I don't think I'd be able to do that. I don't think I'd be able to take it. I think I'd never speak what comes to my mind out loud. But then you're never speaking. Uh, probably for the best for everyone around me too. I mean, for their ears, yeah. Yeah. Which makes doing this stupid, but. I'd never be able to talk. Yeah. I don't know. I think I yeah I think I'd I'd speak what comes to my mind yeah because I don't think I have very destructive thoughts yeah very very sort of mild mannered that the the only situation where I would disagree with you is you know when it comes to or just you know somebody's walking by and he's bold and he's a slapped you call him a slapped you know <laughs> like it yeah I mean but I say those things out loud anyway just not loud enough for them to hear <laughs> I know yeah. I know um yeah i thought that would be a there you go there's rather. there's a nice little uh middle ground say it out loud but not loud enough for them to hear you see a lengyal you just quietly say oh, yeah but now you've yeah, added you've added a dimension English, to this that's not allowed they will hear what you say everyone hears what you say okay yeah it's a cold day bruv why you got your pale ankles out so thank you very much for joining us again for what has been episode 17 of the Hold It Down podcast, we will be back again next week, inshallah, with episode 18. Um, or will we? We will discuss that because we have things going on. My friend over here has a surgery. I have a wedding to prepare for. I may then be away for a honeymoon. So we may or may not be here next week, uh, but we'll let you know. Uh, not that any of you give a fuck. Uh, in the meantime, please build other questions. Down there in the description will be the link to the anonymous form. Rack it up because we've gone through everything that is uh, reasonable enough to put on the internet because there are some people out there who who do say everything that is on their mind and put questions which just cannot be answered for the sake of our freedom. Uh, so please go on the anonymous form, put your questions in there, subscribe on YouTube if you're watching uh, and you've gotten this far. We should not say that in the beginning. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Hidcast at Hidcast, YouTube, Instagram. Facebook, All of the social media is like Hidcast. MySpace, Bebo. Oh, Bebo was sick. But yeah. yeah, we love you all and we'll see you soon. It's a very poor outro for me. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs>